Now, if you're like me, however, and you have the rear sequential turn signals installed on your rear bumper, that adds a little bit, little different dynamic, I guess you could say, in how we set this thing up because they both plug into the same power source. So that doesn't necessarily cause an issue, uh, but it does give you an excess jumbling of wires and whatnot. Get some access to the back of the vehicle. I'm also going to unplug the battery at this time just because that's normally a good idea when you're doing anything electrical. We're going to need to take this trim piece off. So it's just these clips here, here, and then two on this side as well and then we'll need to take these small clips out so we can sort of take this this liner out to expose the back side of our tail lights it's just these two little modules on each side from diode dynamics the same company that we got the uh, always on module for the fog lights so we know their stuff works pretty decent apparently they're plug and play you can see the little plug-ins there takes our normal turn signal which is just that little round circle in the middle of the tail light which some people I guess don't like as a turn signal and then uses the tail lights as the turn signal which is cool So we got the trim panel removed off and I exposed what I forgot as our really janky sequential turn signal installation wiring anyway. That was almost plug and play except in order to feed the wires through we had to actually cut the plug off which is really stupid. Um, and then we just had to put, you know, reconnect the wires and I use these stupid wire nuts because I didn't have any uh, uh, wire connectors at the time. So we'll see what I got now and maybe we can improve this but essentially I think our new diode dynamics plugs will just go in between here. Okay so our sequential rear turn signals came as this little sort of harness here. Um, that just went in between or in line basically between our two plugs for the factory turn signal. So you have the power and then the turn signal side itself. This just connected the two we'll just went between them so this goes down this goes down to the turn signals here this is what replaces your the factory reflector in your rear bumper um, and then it gets power from your uh, tail lights and turn signals obviously so it allows power to go to your regular uh, tail lights but also branches off and provides power to these which used to just be your your reflectors so normally these would install very very easily just like, actually exactly like the tail, uh, the sequential tail lights or the sequential turn signals in the bumper. They do the same exact thing. They split this harness here and kind of act as a, a, a little jumper. The problem is they both plug in the same place. Oof. Factory blinker. You can see the sequential still working there. Nothing has changed on this one. So I just grab a test light here if you guys have ever used one of these and just touch here We have the blinkers on obviously Just touching the different wires. No nothing for red nothing for blue at this time But we hit the yellow And she's flashing like the blinker so we know the yellow At least in the diode dynamics harness yellow is the blinker then we come over here to the um, Rear sequential turn signal that's still plugged in. Nothing in black. In white. So we know white in this harness is the turn signal. So both are working here clearly. And this is this is the easy way of doing it. This is what I really wanted to avoid and what I'm gonna try to avoid. So we just connected everything up. And this is what I don't want. I don't want a bunch of wires and crap hanging out back here. So you basically just put the rear sequential signal in line with the diode dynamics tailless turn signal harness. Oh god damn that gets hot. We can't we can't be doing that. If you guys have been following along, you'll know first of all that we have the LED uh, RGB color changing front emblem for the Q50 ready for a giveaway. So get over to that video and uh, get entered to win. As long as you're within that 
the deadline. I'll, I'll list the dates in the description below and a link to that video as well. So make sure you head over there, get entered to win as long as you still got time remaining. So this is the turn signal now, tail light as turn signal compared to the factory turn signal, which is kind of like that single terminator eye, right? So we're going to be working on that one. This one is complete with the diode dynamics tail light as turn signal uh, installed. Simple. Now, I also have these rear sequential taillights. Now, from the factory, this is just a reflector. So, that harness looks like this. It's very, very similar. It just takes, it just plugs in to the power source and then has a jumper basically to your taillights. Uh, and then that runs power to the sequential turn signal, but also keeps that power directed to your taillight. The problem is the diode dynamics taillight as turn signal module has the same little setup gets the power from the power source and goes to the tail light uh, and it changes it up. It deflects that power from your blinker to the tail light. So your factory blinker here no longer is in use. It goes to the tail light. I hope I explained that. Um, but what we need to do is get this installed and also keep that sequential turn signal involved because we don't want to lose that. Now I've done it on this side already and I did it the easiest way. This gets hot when the turn signal is on. I'm going to shut that off quick. I honestly don't like how hot this gets. Woo! Almost too hot to touch. Um, the simple way is to basically just install it right in line. So you plug the sequential turn signal into the power side. Then you plug the diode dynamics tail light as turn signal plug into that, which then takes the power through the turn signal module and up into the tail light. So simple as that. It's power, sequential turn signal, tail light as turn signal module from diode dynamics to the tail light itself. Very simple. Now the other way would be to eliminate the plug from the sequential turn signal and just splice the wires from the turn signal into the diode dynamics harness. And that is simple enough as well as if you'd like to go through that. Now, if you would like to do it that way, and I was going to, but I think I'm just gonna do it this way. This is simple enough, and I cleaned it up from the last installation, so we actually got some legitimate wire connectors. We'll tape these off, make it I actually got the, the old test light out, and I tested every one of them to see what we are working with. So from your sequential turn signals, if you look at your wires from the sequential turn signal in the bumper, this guy, the wires are as follows. The red wire is your headlight, the white wire is your blinker, and the blue wire is brakes. So you're looking at them here. Red headlights, white blinker, blue is your brakes. The black is like the ground wire or whatever. Um, now the way the power is distributed in the tail light is turn signal module from diode dynamics, link in the description. Blue is your headlight, yellow is your blinker, and red is your brake. Now if you want to do it the cleanest way and just splice your sequential turn signal into the diode dynamics harness, you would take this red wire, which is your, which is the headlights, and go to this blue wire. Headlights, tail lights, same thing, right? This white wire is your blinker. So that is gonna to go to the yellow wire here. And then you have the blue wire, which is your brake, to the red wire here, which is your brake. Now this is assuming your harness is set up <laughs> the same way. I know some of these sequential turn signals that you can get um, through various websites have a little bit different wiring. What I would do is, what I would suggest is just get yourself a test light. There are a few dollars at Harbor Freight and just test them all out. And I'm sure there are a ton of videos online on how to use a, a test light. Um, but it's very simple and that's how I did it here to determine uh, where power is coming from and what wire is what. So again, if you just wanted to connect them right up, this is my chart here. You know, use this, um, I guess take this with a grain of salt, you could say, because like I said, every harness might be a little bit different depending on the vendor that you chose. Uh, but in my case, if I wanted to do it this way, I would hook the wires up how I just mentioned here. Basically, all I did was just cut a little bit out of uh, the wire here just to try to clean it up, 
I don't like all that excess wire. I would love to not have so many clips and plugs in here, but I'm basically just going to tape these wires up to make sure the connection stays good and everything is secure and insulated. And then um, just probably zip tie them up somewhere so it stays nice and clean and nothing rattles around. But that's, that's pretty, it's about as easy as it gets. So we're gonna unplug the sequential signal. Oh my gosh, one hand, rough. Okay, so there's so much excess wire here, and we obviously don't like this. This is just a trashy way to do it. I'm gonna trim this up to about right here. That'll give us plenty. This is basically just trimming the harness. So the point of this obviously was just to shorten the harness up a little bit so we didn't have so much excess wire. Now we just plug it in. Now it was plugged in before. Well, sorry. You can just plug it in how it was plugged in before, but we have to put the diode dynamic tail as turn signal in here to make sure it works. Where did it, here it is. So yeah, again, plug your sequential signal in just how it was before. Now we put the diode dynamic signal in line. And these only these plug in in only one way, so there we go. Everything's in line test it out moment of truth boom both working tail light now as the turn signal sequential still working on the other side boom boom okay my battery died on my camera so just finishing up on the phone here I'll just tie everything up and uh, we're gonna secure these wire connectors because these wires are very very skinny so they very easily pop out a little electrical tape and we should be good to go on both side sides and then zip tie all your wires up so there's no ratting. You're good to go. One final test after taping everything up. Just put a bunch of electrical tape around each of the wires and then as a whole, just make sure nothing gets pulled loose. And we'll zip tie everything up. Should be good. Make sure your battery is secured again if you if you loosened it. And that's all she wrote. All finished. Simple. Cool. And don't forget guys to get entered to win on that led emblem the rgb front emblem gloss black with carbon fiber background this was on my personal q54 a year or so maybe just shy of a year works great i ran it on blue as you guys know match my calipers i love it giving this thing away if the date hasn't passed yet make sure you get over to that video linked in the description below and get yourself entered to win follow the instructions do it now get entered super clean products is involved in well as well uh, speed culture t-shirt decals keychains lots of stuff going on with this giveaway so make sure you don't miss out on it thank you guys very much for watching another installation video for the q50 on these diode dynamics tailless turn signals combined with the sequential tail lights or sequential turn signals in the rear bumper lots of stuff going on with the q50 more stuff coming for the 350z 
some exciting news coming up as well. Again, don't forget the giveaway. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate the continued support. Appreciate the continued support. See you in the next one.